not all that hard to focus on the breath. As soon as the thought comes into the mind, you're right there. The hard part is in staying there. And for that, you need to have a strong sense of how valuable it is to have peace of mind, to have the mind centered in one place. You have to be very protective of what you've got. In the beginning, it may not seem like all that much. Just being still in the present moment for a second or two is not impressive. So you need to keep reminding yourself it's not going to be impressive right away, but you give it time, give it a chance to grow. It's like any plant. It starts out as a seed, which may not look like much, but some seeds will surprise you. Like the seeds of a redwood tree, and they're tiny little things, but they can grow into the tallest living thing on earth if they get the right conditions. In the beginning, the right conditions include finding a quiet place, like we have here. But you can't depend on the quiet place to do all the work for you. You've got to be watchful yourself, because there are dangers on all sides for your seed. A fire can burn it. Birds could eat it. They get too little water, too much water. So you have to keep watch on your seed. One of the ways of protecting it is through restraint of the senses. In fact, the text many, many times will mention restraint of the senses as a prerequisite for getting the mind into concentration. Because if you're wandering all around and things you look at, things you hear, things you taste, touch, smell, think about, then you're leaving the windows and doors wide open. There's no protection for your seed at all. It's not so much that the sights and sounds and smells and tastes and tactile sensations are just going to destroy your seed. It's the, the greed, anger, and delusion that come out of the mind. Those burn your seed. So you have to be careful. Whatever's going to come out of your mind that could destroy this little seed of concentration, this little seed of stillness, you've got to be very careful to keep it in check. So even when your eyes are open and you're out engaging in life outside, you have to be very careful about how you look, how you listen. how you engage the, the objects of your senses. If you find yourself especially drawn to something because it's pretty, look for its other side. Or if you find yourself really upset about something, look for its other side as well. Try to balance things out. And that way you find you have a little circle of protection around this seed of quietness the seed of stillness. While you're sitting here with your eyes closed, you have to be meticulous as well. On the one hand, of course, there are going to be the hindrances. On the other hand, you have to watch out for your tendency to go along with the hindrances. When you think of something you find really attractive, it's very easy to say, well, my mind needs a little refreshment, it needs a little something to keep it keep it amused, keep it entertained after all this meditation is getting kind of dry. You have to watch out for that. Or for little something comes along and it seems little. This this couldn't matter, you say. Just let this thought come into my mind a little bit. If you're gonna be sloppy while you're meditating here, 
It's going to be even sloppier when you're outside. So you've got to be very meticulous to watch out for your stillness. Don't let anything touch it. As John Lee says, it's like putting a lid over a dish of food so the flies can't get to it. You've got to be very watchful, meticulous, heedful. Because anything could come along at any time to destroy your stillness. Even something as dull as boredom can destroy your stillness as well. So whatever voices come into the mind that would pull you away even the least little bit, you have to learn how not to listen to them, not pay them any attention. Not give them an inch of space in your mind. Or if they're going to be chattering away in the background, make sure they stay in the background. Give all your attention to the breath. And after a while, when the mind does get still, you'd think that would be the end of the problem, that the stillness would be enough to keep you attracted. But it's not always the case, because you start getting complacent. Laziness is natural to all of us. When things seem to be going well, nothing seems to disturb the mind very much, you start letting down your guard. And when that happens, the, those little tiny fires of greed, anger, and delusion can burn away here, burn away there. Think of them as little tiny bugs. They nibble here, they nibble there. And at first, they don't seem to do any damage. The mind seems impervious to them. But if you let them stay there long enough. They start eating away, eating away, and all of a sudden, whoop, there it's gone. They've got your seed. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha said heedfulness lies at the base of all skillful qualities. It's the heedfulness that gets you started on the path, and it's heedfulness that keeps you on the path, realizing it's so easy to slip off. Or so easy to find a spot in the path that you like and just lie down there and just stop walking. But this path is like one of those magical paths in fairy tales or fantasy stories. If you don't walk on it, if you lie down it, it starts to dissolve underneath you. So it's a path you've got to keep following. You can't ever let down your guard. One of the qualities you're trying to develop on the path is this quality of meticulousness and being very careful about what you do and having a strong sense of the value of the path. Because it's your ability to see little things that's going to make all the difference. Because the movements of greed, anger, and delusion in the mind start out very small. The good things in the mind start out very small as well. And to catch the movements, you have to be very observant. Very meticulous, very precise. And it's his habit of being meticulous and precise. That what, that's what protects the meditation. to make sure that there's no crack anywhere, even the slightest little thing can come sneaking in. When your sense of protectiveness is that solid and that consistent, that's when the stillness of mind has a chance to grow, put down roots. Because precision becomes an integral part of it. So don't be careless. When things are bad, don't get discouraged. Just keep coming back to whatever concentration you have. When things go well, don't get complacent. Don't let 
the concentration fool you into thinking that it'll always be there, no matter what. After all, it's something fabricated, something intentional. So learn to treat it as something of value. And that's when it will show you its value.